Hi, I'm Grace Lock Robin. I'm a philosopher working in the community and in academia. And I want to talk to you about having climate conversations with children. So when you think young people are ready to have conversations about the climate and the ecological emergency, 15, 16, like the age of the young people in this image? I think that the answer is not long after they learn to speak. So these children are at nursery, they're two and three. And what should these conversations look like with two, three, four, five, six, seven-year-olds? Should adults teach them about the facts, about the carbon cycle, about capitalism and geopolitics? Eventually, and in an age appropriate way, these, this kind of information, this knowledge is gonna be needed. But I suggest that early on in the lives of children, adults should listen really carefully to children's thoughts and feelings about the philosophical questions that are raised by this existential threat. We, by which I mean educators and parents, should make space for inquiry, not just instruction. And this inquiry should not just be into the facts of the climate and ecological emergency. It should also, it should be an inquiry into the meaning and the values that underpin this crisis. Even really young children can ask, what does it mean to enjoy nature and resources and to share them fairly? What does it mean to want or to need something, to create or to destroy something? What's hope? What does it mean to act, to change? And why do any of these things matter? The kind of conversations that I have with young people can be elicited by all sorts of things, their own experiences, the things they care about. But one of the ways I start philosophical conversations with young people about meaning and values as they are raised by the climate crisis is through narratives. Narratives that either realistically depict those facts, but often wildly imaginative narratives that are emotionally and intellectually illuminating in some way. They illuminate the meaning and values in some way that's really quite revealing. And so I wanted to read to you a little extract from this book, book by Dr. Zeus, The Lorax. And this is a book that I've had conversations with um, four and five-year-olds about the climate crisis. At no time at all, I built a small shop. Then I chopped down the truffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill, with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a need. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump. Out of the tree, I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard, I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset and he showered and puffed. What is that thing you've made out of my truffle tuft? Look, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped down just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed and it needs to find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, or bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But that very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the need I had knitted was great. And he happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. Okay, so what can you do with these kind of rich stories that show so many sides of issues at the heart of the climate emergency? The drivers of consumption, 
the consequences of habitat loss, which is something that emerges a little later in the story. The importance of job creation. Okay, this guy employs all of his family in this factory that he makes. The role of activism. Maybe the Lorax is a kind of activist. The power of corporations. Well, we can ask really simple, child appropriate, sometimes child composed and child led questions like, do people need needs? Do people need money? What is a need? Children who consider meaning and values like this, the meaning and values that are at stake, at stake in the climate and ecological emergency, I think are in a much better position to face the enormous challenges ahead. Because in the face of the climate crisis, young people face a future in which they're gonna to have to weigh complex considerations. They need to determine which goals they need to value and which sacrifices they're gonna to have to make. They need to interrogate what we mean by justice and fairness across countries, across economies, across species, across generations, including future generations not yet born. And I argue that this requires the kind of careful thinking that philosophy cultivates. And these are just some of the ways that we help these conversations to happen. I'd love to hear what you think about whether there is a significant role for philosophical conversations in trying to educate young people to uh, cope with the climate crisis. Thanks very much. <laughs>